Hi everyone, how are you doing? This is Amanda, hope you're good. So today we're going to be doing a video looking at the State of the Union I'm hearing. Um, how interesting is that phrase, State of the Union. So yes, we're talking twin flame energies, divine counterpart energies, soulmate energies. I don't want us to get too caught up on all of the words or phraseology. Um, I think that a lot of what I'm going to be talking about in this video is applicable to you, whether you are already with that divine counterpart and in union. And it's going to be taught. I'm going to be talking about a deepening of the connection. Um, that's assuming it's a good one, of course. If it's if it is no good, then you know that's probably a different video. Um, this is something that's good that we can get to an even better level and depth of intimacy and, um, I don't know, closeness. But it's also a video that's very applicable for those of you that may very well know who your div divine counterpart is, your twin flame, um, but for whatever reason, you're not actually with them at the moment. And this could have been going on for many years. Um, to be honest, I was really taken by surprise yesterday at the urgent call to do this video. Um, I have done a number of videos linked into Twin Flame in particular. There's a playlist you can look back on. And those of you that follow me know that I tend to only come back on when I really can feel that something has shifted in the energy, in the collective energy. Um, I don't personally want to be doing videos week after week in terms of, you know, what does the divine masculine think? What does the divine feminine think? Um, it's not my thing. So I come back on when I can really feel a big shift. And because it's big, it tends to affect um, most of us that are linked into this particular spiritual path. Um, this calling, particularly the twin flame calling. I put it through various filters yesterday um, because I wanted to make sure that I was really onto something. And it's funny because Metatron, Archangel Metatron, my guide this morning, showed me, uh, you know, coffee filters, the paper coffee filters. Well, obviously, usually when you filter coffee through a paper coffee filter, it's full of all of the grains that you don't want to drink. Well, this filter paper was completely um, clear and clean. What he meant by that was that the information I'm receiving is clear and clean. I'm, I'm right to deliver it to you. Um, so let's get to it and I'll tell you a little bit of the synchronicities that brought this about. Um, firstly, the energy seemed to start to change around equinox. I suppose that's not a great surprise because if you think about equinox, it's all about balance. It's all about balance and finding harmony and trying to bring back into balance that which may not be so. We are also about to enter Libra season, which is the sign of the scales. Again, it's about bringing something back into balance. And what I'm feeling now is that the two soul energies, it's like two soul group energies that I'm linking into, divine masculine and divine feminine, and this applies to same-sex unions and also... Um, you know, um, male and female unions. So that, again, don't get caught up in that. But the two groups I'm feeling have got very far apart from each other. Um, emotionally, maybe physically. And Metatron's saying in many ways, this for some has been good because each of the two separate camps have very much been working on their own stuff. Even if you can't see that they have, that is what's been happening. In other groups, it may very well be that just one of the partners has particularly been working on themselves and the other one might have been, I'm seeing somebody twiddling their thumbs, not really doing very much. But the end result is the same. Uh, divine feminine, divine masculine, quite far apart. But there is a, you know, a gravity is what I'm hearing. You know, it's like gravity. There's always a pulling back together. When a particularly twin flame gets too far apart from each other, there is just this natural law that will bring them closer together. It's like, it's like magnets that, that just magnetize back together. 
almost as though I'm seeing um, in my mind's eye now a snow scene and it's as though um, the two have drifted very far apart from each other and up to a certain point they were drifting away from each other but they could still feel each other's warmth to a degree. You can turn your back on somebody and walk away but you can still feel their warmth, you can still feel their energy and it's almost, there's a bit of arrogance there to be perfectly honest, it's almost like well it's okay I can keep on walking because I know they're sort of really still there. You get to a point though whereby if you keep on walking you can't even feel the heat um, and that is the point at w which you turn around and it's almost like what I'm being shown now is a race back to each other. Um, the trip out into the snow, out into the wilderness was for a reason. It's all part of the um, wider dynamic in terms of just needing to find more about self. If you think about it, if you go on an adventure and you are a wanderer, um, you have to dig deep into your own reserves. You have to find out what you're capable of um, solo as well. You have to find out what you're capable of solo. And then when you've discovered that, you can then bring those new found talents and gifts back into the partnership. Now, again, remember, this doesn't have to be physical distance. This could be a couple who actually are still, you know, living together, sleeping together. But you can get great emotional distance that can come in to um, even very good relationships. Um, but the point is that in a relationship or a connection that is meant to survive and not just survive, but thrive at the moment, it feels as though um, the planets, the energies, um, the the guides are, it's, I'm hearing like a, it's like a bell. It's like a last order bell. If you've ever worked in a pub, I have, you know, you ring the bell for last orders and then it's like, right, come on, drink up. Let's get back. Let's get back home. This is the thing. Let's get back home. So, um, that's part of the energy that sort of came in around equinox and, as I say, with the start of Libra season. The other thing that happened yesterday was I was just walking down to the beach and, you know, me and my musical song references. Um, but equally, I'm sure lots of you also play music via YouTube. And what happens is YouTube creates a playlist, doesn't it, of songs that you listen to quite often or songs that are sort of linked, you know, somehow. And um, you know what's going to come up, you know, give or take a, a few things. Yesterday, a song came onto my um, in, in, on, onto my speakers. That's such an old fashioned way of saying it. Onto my um, iPods, um, which was a song. Well, it was a song I've never heard of. It was also a singer I'd never heard of. Um, I'll tell you what it is in a moment. I was so intrigued because it came from nowhere. I was like, well, who is this singer? So I went onto their actual channel and then I went onto their Facebook page and it looks like they've got about 600 followers. So the fact that I'm listening to this song is just really random. And I thought, well, this, 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 this is something other than just a recommendation. This is spirit putting something under my nose. Now, the song was called Embers hence the title of this video, Embers, by a man called Chase Beadle. Um, it's a lovely song, actually. It's a really lovely song. Um, it has no lyrics attached to it, so you've got to listen quite carefully to what he's singing. It's quite melancholic. It's obviously a love song. There's a lot in the title, Embers. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. Then another song came on, which again, I've never heard of before. I know the band, but I've never heard this particular song, Coldplay. And it's a song called Gravity. Very beautiful love song. Um, from what I can take from it, it seems to be about what I've just said. Two souls that sort of drift apart, but do a dance and sort of come back together again. It's like, will they come back? Won't they? And the... Um, the imagery for the Coldplay video is of two ballet dancers. It's very beautiful. I think one of them might be an angel, actually, but they're sort of dancing with each other. There's a beautiful flow. There's a rhythm, um, gravity, pulling them pull, uh, apart and then coming back together. 
and I just thought this feels this is interesting um then because as you know I'm a Mark Armand fan okay he will always be my number one Mark's in my heart I know that Mark Armand also has done a song called Embers a few years ago so my interest was piqued now I was trying to follow the little signs that spirit gives you so I went and re-watched Mark's video for Embers and I had completely forgotten, again, it's got two ballet dancers in the video. It's actually beautiful. I'm, I will put the links below. The, so, the lyrics to Mark Armand's Embers as well is just beautiful. It says something like this. I've written them down. Um, the embers are dying out to the night one last time. Um, please relight the flame or I'll fade away. The embers are glowing, through, though ice winds are blowing. I hope you will see this torch I am holding with love from my heart. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. But again, we've got embers, which I want to explore in this video, because embers can do one, one of two things. They can either completely just be, they can be trodden out or they can be rekindled. And this feels as though we're at a very pivotal crossroads moment for many relationships and many connections, whether you're already in relationship and connection with this person and you know who they are, or whether they are somebody that, um, well, you do know who they are, but they're not, you're not actually with them, okay? Uh, that's the whole twin flame thing. You know who they are, but you might not be with them for whatever reason. Um, so I'm going to explore that in this video. I'm going to look at what does, what are we, what are we talking about in terms of embers? Um, so I'll put those three songs for you to listen to. I think they all tell a story. Um, Embers by Chase Beadle, um, Embers by Mark Armand and Gravity by Coldplay and um, The Dancer. We, I mean, we're all dancers, aren't we? Right, this morning I sat down and I thought, right, I'm going to do some cards. I've got a couple of different decks that I'm going to be using one of them is the Lemurian Star Child Oracle deck. Okay, I have actually got an affiliate link to this deck, so I will put it below if you haven't got it. It's a great deck. It's by um, Leanne Carpenter and Michael Croon. Um, and I just pulled two cards, thought, okay, do I need to use this deck? Is there anything to say from it? The first card that I pulled out is this one, which is the Fire of Transformation. We're back to embers. You can't have embers without a fire okay and it says radical purification violet flame surrendering and resurrection and we've obviously got the energy of the phoenix there rising from the ashes rising from the embers the next card that goes with that one and this really just took my my breath away is card number seven and it says integration and if you have a look at this card, we've got two figures approaching a, well, it looks like a great big piece of crystal quartz. They're being invited into this crystal quartz home, cocoon, sanctuary, I don't know, energy bath. Um, they have been led to this place together. They're hand in hand. They're walking towards it by two doves that are flying overhead, implying that spirit is um, pulling these two souls towards something which feels very powerful and is about integration. There is a third figure here. This might imply that there have been karmic relationships which have slowed down the process of maybe these two getting together because one of these two or both of these two may very well have been in a karmic relationship that had to close out for this to happen or is in the process of closing out. We've also got two tortoises here, which is saying to me that this has not been an overnight process. To get these two, spirit, for the spirit to have got these two into this chamber, and I'm now being told the chamber is the heart. It's almost as, it's like a combined heart energy. It's the pod from which they both came, okay? I don't believe that you, um, we have split souls in terms of your twin flame is 
uh, one part of your soul and you know you're the other part I believe in sovereign souls I've said that time and time again in my videos but again if you've watched my twin flame videos you know I talk about the fact that I believe that the twin flame divine counterparts sort of shoot out at the same moment of conception in terms of conception into the world in conception into the universe the first spark that started off their journeys over lifetime after lifetime after lifetime so they were sort of in this pod as it were before they were sort of shot out into space and time and all the different dimensions that they have um, known each other existed with each other and now they're being invited back into this sort of I'm just hearing pod to <coughs> excuse me regroup um, come back together, um, settle, reacquaint, and I'm, we're going to tune into what happens in this pod. But again, the words to this card say um, forgiveness, forgive, forgiveness of self and forgiveness of others, reunion, letting go of defences and opening the door. Now, I do want to say that this thing about forgiving self and others um, my hunch is that for many divine masculine and divine feminine counterparts, because we're also about to go into a Mercury retrograde phase, if we're not already in it, I don't know when it actually starts, but it's coming. But I don't know about you, I pick it up before it actually begins. We must already be in Mercury retrograde shadow because I'm already feeling it. We are revisiting our pasts, but we're revisiting our... Hear me out here. What I mean by past is we're revisiting... Um, wounding from the past and we are being cleansed in like a great big crystal bath is the only way I can describe it um, it's as though anything that has been holding us back and has uh, has been wounding us and preventing deeper connection or indeed union with another is being put into its final rinse cycle is what Metatron is saying this can be quite um quite something okay it could be quite something you may very well have things coming up from your past that you haven't thought about in years you may very well have fractures in relationships and I'm talking relationships I'm not I don't necessarily mean with regard to your divine counterpart or your twin flame I'm talking about any other fractured relationship or wound that you have in your life that would then impact on the way that you would behave within a loving relationship um it may very well be parental as well. It may very well be parental because if you think about the relationship we had with our parents or the relationship we have with our parents, um, if there is still stuff that is unhealed or unforgiven, then you are unintentionally or intentionally going to take that into a relationship with another because you will see aspects of what happened to you in terms of how you you know, your mother treated you or your father treated you in the male or female that you have within your life, because we are all representations of each other. So many of us are being given a chance to relook at aspects going way back into childhood or going back in. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be childhood. Um, last night I had a, a beautiful dream in many ways. But again, I realized it was this crystal bath final rinse cycle. I was back in a church that I used to go to probably between the ages of one and ten. We used to go every Sunday. It was a lovely church. And I was back there. I haven't been there for 40 years. Um, and I was showing a group of people around, some of whom were you, people I know who watch me. And I was just showing you the church and I was showing you where I used to stand and, you know, where we used to ring the bells and where I used to sit in the choir and um, even down to the point of my birth certificate or my birth is recorded in the book in the church because I was christened in the church. But there was there was this welling up of um, tears as I was showing people around because I was aware that I was aware of the passage of time. I was aware that it was 40 years at least since I was in that building and I've changed and I've grown. But there must have been something there from that time period that equally needs to be tweaked or needs to be healed. And so I was back in the place where I needed to be or with the people that I needed to be with to help me heal that. So, <clears throat> you know, our dreams are going back into the past. Mercury retrograde always does this. 
but it's happening in a bigger way, but it's also for a bigger purpose, I'm hearing. Um, it's preparing us for this deeper love, this deeper connection, this deeper intimacy. Um, for those of us that have signed up for that in this lifetime. And if I'm honest, um, because one of the energies, one of the reasons I haven't come back on and do, done one of these videos for a while, is that I don't think this is just me that's probably been feeling this. Because of what's been happening in the world, I'll light some incense just to sage and cleanse this energy away. Because of the whole energy in the world at the moment, which is difficult, it's challenging, it's very traumatic for many of us. Um, there's an awful lot of, you know, frustration, anger, grief, judgment, division, separation. It's just, you know, Mother Earth right now, I mean, she is still beautiful and there's still plenty of peace and all the rest of it out there. But you've got to wade through a lot of, you know, difficult dross, haven't we, to get to that place. So as part of me, it was just thinking, well, just you know, put all that on the back burner. You know, does it really matter about deeper connection? Does it really matter about love? You know, it's just like, how, how can, how's that even important in the greatest, you know, um, state of things? You know, look at the state of the world, you know, take it into the environment, look at the environment, look at this, look at that, look at the wars. It's like, well, you know, who cares really about whether you've got a, you know, a deeper connection or, you know, the right one beside you. That type of energy was what I was feeling. But this is what surprised me, really, with this equinox. It's just like, well, no, of course it bloody matters. Of course it matters, you know. And, um, you know, whether you like it or not, spirit is bringing that back because also it's what you deserve. It's what you deserve. Um, and indeed, how many times have you heard me say and other teachers say and probably yourself say that the one thing that heals this world, particularly when it gets so difficult and dark, is love. So where do we find love? We tend to find love in our relationships, in our close connections. The twin flame energy, as an example, is, um, is one of the highest manifestations of unconditional love on this planet. Another one would be the love that a parent has for its child, for example, you know? The love that we might have, <coughs> excuse me, we might have for an animal. <coughs> yeah? Sorry, that incense is going to my throat. Let me just have a bit of water. So, of course it's being brought back around because we can't put love on the back burner, is what I'm hearing. Yes, there's lots of other stuff that's important, but this is crucial. So, let's relook at these two cards. Fire of purification and integration. <clears throat> embers embers that either you can tread into the ground and ignore and walk away from but I still well with twin flame I don't think you ever really can because there's still going to be a little bit of heat within that trodden on pile but I feel as though some of the embers are springing back to life very unexpectedly and I'm actually hearing spirit is blowing on the embers spirit is bringing the embers back to life you might have tried to tread them into the ground, but spirit is saying, no, there's still life in this um, because it's important. So, guys, let's get some cards. Do Let's get some cards um, out. <clears throat> let's just pull some tarot cards for to start with. And I'm also going to use some of my sprays. Um, has to also be said that the third thing that I think has brought this energy back to the fore and for us to be talking about it is one equinox, two the start of Libra season, three Merlin. <laughs> really, you know, um, if you're not on my Instagram and Facebook channels, you don't know the big, I mean, just mighty entrance of Merlin at this week. We have never had a spray sell out in 10 minutes. We launched this on equinox. It sold out in 10 minutes. I, it was just... <laughs> I mean, crazy demand, stampede for Merlin. Um, there was another hundred put in the shop yesterday. They sold out as well. Tracy will keep restocking over the next week or so. Everybody will get one that wants one. But, you know, again, I did a video on the beach uh, where I brought through a decree 
from Merlin. A decree is a law. It's like a law. It's like putting something down. It's like saying, we believe in magic. Well, if you believe in magic, hold on to your hats, guys. Okay. This is, this is, this is all part of it. I really believe the Merlin energy is coming in to literally, he's saying, stir things back to life again. Um, that which you thought was dead and buried, it's like there's still life in this. And it, I'm being, <laughs> he's definitely got a bit of a humour, Merlin, because he's like, he's like showing me, he always shows me stirring a pot, but it's almost like, you know, when you're making a soup and then you taste the soup and it's like he's got this big wooden ladle and he's testing the soup and the soup is your, your, the mixture of your energy with this other person. And it's like, yeah, that still tastes good. That hasn't gone off. Back into the pot. Give it a nut. Let's just stir it again. And you see, this is the whole thing. Let's stir it again. It's like emotions being stirred back up. Oh, God, I don't want to think about that person again. I don't want to feel that again. What's that coming back up for? Is this just Mercury retrograde? No, it's not just Mercury retrograde. It's not just I'm going to go and have another look at things in the past. Yes, we are doing that to heal what's in the past. But it feels as though things are being brought back to life for some. So um, let's pull some cards at this point and see what we get. I'm just going to pull three cards to start with without even asking a question. Um, the first card is the six of feathers in this deck, which is transition and insight. And it's got the dragonfly. I mean, I talked about the dragonfly, didn't I, in a video? I don't know. Was it last video on here? Or I do daily videos on Instagram. So I don't know when I, where I said it. But I talked about my, uh, an, um, a dragonfly landed on my left knee. Um, and I'm actually hearing kissed me, <laughs> as Bella confirms. Um, and lots of you are saying, oh, yeah, I'm seeing dragonflies. I'm seeing dragonflies. In fact, there's a lot happening with the, I don't know whether you'd call a dragonfly an insect, but the insect kingdom. I also talked about the praying mantis, which is to do with the hanged man energy. You know, mm, I thought, oh, really? Let me think again. You know, let me think again. You know, even the Mark Arman CD from that song Embers, it's called Shadows and Reflections. Shadows and reflections. I'm reflecting back on something that was in the shadows, something that I thought was done and dusted. OK, so um, six of feathers, the dragonfly. In this deck, it's about transition and insight. Six of feathers. Um, I just need to double check what feathers are in this deck, because... Uh, this is the Spirit Song Tarot deck. So feathers are, um, oh, they would be swords. They would be swords. Feathers are used in place of the traditional swords and are, the t are tied to the energy of air, the element of air. They symbolise power, freedom and celestial wisdom. Ooh, I like that. What is that again? Power, celestial wisdom and... Um, God, I tell you what, you get to my age and you start to forget what you've said three seconds before. It's ridiculous. Power, freedom and celestial wisdom. Power, freedom and celestial wisdom. We'll take that, yeah? Six. Okay. Dragonfly. All right, let's see what else. I'm not wanting to link it back to the swords, actually. I'm just wanting to call it feathers. The world, 21, fulfillment and celebration. I will say on the bottom of this deck, we've got the card of the shaman, which is probably the card of the hermit. I think it's the hermit card. I'll double check that. So the world is the completion of a cycle. Um, let me just check shaman, shaman, shaman. Um, Eagle is the courageous collector of spiritual knowledge. He holds the ability to connect to higher spirit. Um, he, sorry, he holds the ability to connect to higher spirit teachers, rising above and beyond the material world. Eagle thr thrives in the realm of spirit, yet remains fixed in the realm of earth. Moving gracefully through skies, Eagle will teach you how to conserve and use your own energy. Um... Yeah, it must be the Hermit card, I think, which would make sense. It feels as though it's the end of the cycle of going within and um, walking away from each other. You know, I was talking at the beginning of the snow, the snow walk. 
and like walking away from each other, but reflecting, learning, integrating, you know, it's, 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 it's the path of the hermit, basically. It's all about just going within. It's not about being with others. Well, it feels as though it's the end to that. And we're actually now moving into something different, which is the energy of the six of feathers, being freed from that um, into something else. And look what the next card is. The next card is the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, exactly. It's as though um, this is change. It's change. It's possibilities. We've come out of the hermit phase, come out of the shadows, come out of the reflections. The wheel is turning. The wheel is turning. Um, so I want to go back to this card now. And I'd like to ask Sanat Kamara about this card. Sanat Kamara, Ascended Master, very much linked into the Twin Flame energy as well. Gosh, that looks blinding white, blinding white light on this video today. The way I'm looking at that now, it's almost like that feels as though it's holy fire is what I'm hearing. You know when something gets so hot that it turns white? Uh, that's what this bottle, this is feeling like, that white heat. So it's like we've gone from the intensity of red. Maybe we've worked through some of our red issues, you know, linked into survival, linked into money, linked into old relationships, old patterns. Um, you know, it's all the survival stuff, basically. It's base chakra. We've mo we're moving away from the red issues that have kept us stuck and apart from each other, apart from our divine counterpart, into a different phase of colour, which is more about the white. And white is the blank, is the blank sheet. It's um, the fresh new start. It's the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, let's spray Sanat Kumara. I also want to... Again, let's look at this card. Okay, white light. Let's ask what's happening. Uh, what's happening here? Okay. Sanat Kamara. Message, please. Twin flame energy. September, late September 2021. I'm being shown an albino um, animal or an, uh, and an albino person. I'm hearing without pigment. Um, there's something about the... Um, it's interesting the symbolism I'm getting in this video. We had white snow. We've now got an al albino energy without pigment. Um, Okay, taking it away from albino, this thing about without pigment. Um, I'm picking up that the stage has been set um, for the divine masculine and divine feminine to come back together or to deepen their connection without outside interference. Um, the candle's just gone out as I said that. My candle's just gone out. Um, that's all right, Metatron is saying it was done. There's, there's a closing of a chapter. There's some big closing of chapters here. Um, relight the fire, he said. Of course, relight the fire. Embers, of course, relight the fire. Okay, all right, let's get a fresh candle out. Relight my fire, <laughs> you know my only desire. I'm sure I've probably sang that to you badly before. Um, let's get another candle. Which one should we go for? Let's just go for a very basic white candle. That's all that is needed, Metatron is saying. That is all that is needed. All it takes is one little spark, one little piece of communication, one little gesture, one little um, compromise, one little um, offer. And what was seemingly gone bursts back into life, but in another form. 
but in another form. Um, so I think that's probably quite self-explanatory, really, what that is about. Um, still think there's something else in this card, integration. Let me pull another card that goes with that from the same deck. So I like the three energy at the moment, threes, um, the Holy Trinity energy. It's almost like divine masculine, divine feminine, and the Holy Spirit coming in to, you know, try to um, bring about um, bliss, I'm hearing, bliss, happiness. So what we've got here is, is, is the guide stepping in big time to bring this about. Wow, okay, three other cards. Actually, I'll take that fourth card as well. There's a, there's a lot happening in terms of you can't see it, but here we've got the Palladian frequency stepping in to bring about um, new opportunities and new flames being lit. We've also got angelic frequencies. So we've got both galactic and angelic. Um, and I want to say shamanic here as well, because what I'm feeling is that there seems to be, and then we have the energy of portals and crown. So this is all implying to me that there is energy coming down through the crown in terms of both parties. God, you can't make this stuff up. Look at that card next. I was about to say, um, it's like spirit bringing something in that you can't see. We've got the owl energy. Um, spirit, spirit bringing something down through our crown chakra from above, okay? New frequencies um, to remove the blockages, remove the stuckness, remove the ego, remove the pride, you know, um, it's his turn, it's, it's her turn, it's all of that stuff. Also very much about turning the page. Um, um, being able to start again, basically. Being able to start again. And you may very well have examples of that in other areas of your life. And if that's showing up, and if you hear those words, come on, let's just start again, or, you know, let's try again. Let's just let the past be the past. Let bygones be bygones. Let's start again. It's actually indicative of um, the new start that's needed in your divine connection. So you might be hearing those words linked into work. It could be a work colleague. It could be a situation at work. It could be family. It could be anything. But it's actually, and it still needs attending to, but it's actually a reflection of this bigger let's start again that's coming into the love relationship, whatever your love relationship is. Um, yeah, it's like spirit have been observing both of you walking further away from each other. And um, look at that, it's such a beautiful card because the, the, the owl, not only have we got his beautiful eyes, but we've got his heart, look, his heart is shining so bright. It's a bit like the energy of the whale. You know, whales are supposed to be able to um, hold our wisdom and aspects of our um aspects of what we know from many many lifetimes many many different places many different dimensions they hold it within themselves they're the record keeper and so if you basically um sit and meditate and connect into the energy of whale it will bring back to you what you need the owl here is this sacred and a sacred animal that has been holding within its heart what is truly within your heart and was and, and is and what is within your counterpart's heart that may very well never have been expressed or never been allowed to come to fruition before but for whatever reason and it's probably linked into where we are right now in our world where it's like my god we need the love to shine you are getting drip fed is what i'm hearing via your crown chakra these new frequencies and they are galactic they are angelic and they are shamanic the mix and the combination of those three is going to differ dependent on who you are 
and it may very well also differ between you and your divine counterpart, okay? So they might get a mix which is mostly Palladian energy coming down and a bit of shamanic. You might be more on the angelic frequency with a little smattering of shamanic. It doesn't matter. It's like making a cake, but combined, the energies of the two of you, the energies of the two of you that come back together, it's like each piece has received what it needs to come back and be whole. And I'm realising... <laughs> I'm realising as I hold this up to you that that I'm holding, I'm holding this there. Look, it's there in my hands. It's there in my hands. Okay. It's... It's beautiful actually, isn't it? I mean, come on. <laughs> it's like I'm slightly awestruck by that. Um... Let's have a look at one of each one of these energies then, one by one, that's coming in to try and assist us. Palladian first. The Palladian energy comes in with the energy of the bird in this deck, and it says sacred bond. It's reminding you that you have a sacred bond with another. Um, it's bringing healing and clearing space for higher frequencies. Um, there's something about sound with this card. I'm feeling as though there's something to do with the vibration of sound. One of you on, uh, I think it was Facebook yesterday, you just wrote a bit of a random comment. I didn't mind it, but you said something along the lines of what is the sound vibration required for healing? And it wasn't at all related to the video that I posted. And I did actually respond to you. And I said, the frequency that you need is 528 hertz, which is the miracle frequency. 528 hertz um, and I'm feeling that that seems to link in to the Palladian energy. I'm rummaging here because I've got 528 hertz here. Um, again in my hand there's something here about it's all within grasp, it's all within reach, it's, it's all within your hand, <laughs> it's all within your hand, you've got the tools right? Let's just do a bit of 528 hertz. So, yeah, you may be getting up grades via sound. Merlin is wanting his spray sprayed at this point with 528 hertz. Okay, let's spray the Merlin. Merlin is the magician, the, the wizard. I've written some beautiful uh, channeled poetry. The link is in the description box. Just go to the shop. You don't have to buy the spray. You can read my channeled words. Okay, the decree. Let's bring Merlin in and the 528 hertz, the Palladian frequency. Even though I know he's shamanic, but come on. I don't know. I'm just flowing with what I'm being told to do. Merlin, 528 hertz. He's saying to me, you think I can't bring in a Palladian frequency? He says we're all too far too structured and um, we put everything into boxes, including ourselves. So it's like, well, Merlin is more of a shamanic energy because he's of the earth. And he said, no, I can, bring in, I can bring in the whole cosmos if you wish me to. Okay, so it's like shake it up a bit. Shake up what you think is... Um, Shake up what you expect. The, the miracle zone is the miracle zone. Okay, it's, it's just like anything is possible. So Palladian frequencies definitely seem to come in with the energy of sound. I would recommend that maybe you go off and you listen to some 528 hertz music. Um, meditative, meditative Mind on YouTube has beautiful long videos of over four hours, five hours, fine tuned to that sort of frequency. Um, that may very well bring in a level of healing. Um, we've also got the angels stepping in to help as well. And um, just as we're about to approach 44 minutes, let's just note that, 44 minutes, angels, thank you for being with us always, 4404. So you might be seeing a lot of 444, 44, 404, combinations of 44, 44s. 
four, four, four. I just want to keep saying four. You see, again, the thing about four, the energy of four is it's to do with stability. It's to do with stability. It's grounded. It's root. It's coming home is what I'm hearing. It's coming home. It's coming home. The greatest prize is coming home. But it's equally you're coming home to yourself. You're coming home to truly understanding. You've understood a lot on that trek out into the snow. OK, you've understood a lot. Um, you've also understood your own self-worth, okay? You've understood that you're worthy of this greater love, this greater connection, that actually, I mean, the thing is, to, to, to really be um, appreciative of great love or great union or great intimacy, you also have to have experienced the polar opposite. You have to experience maybe loneliness and um, being alone or feeling alone doesn't mean that you actually have to physically be alone. You can be alone within an existing relationship or within a crowd of people. So there's something here about duality. Again, it's, it's gravity. It's pulling back. I've had that experience. Now I want to come back. I've sort of walked away from you energetically, physically or symbolically, but now I need to come back to you. But it's not need in terms of codependency. It's just... It's just the natural... It's the natural thing about these two being, being pulled back together. You know, the embers being reignited and the angelic ones are helping this process. Divine grace and divine guidance. That feels as though that goes so perfectly with Sanat Kumara, do you not think? So let's just try again with Sanat Kumara. I feel there's something else that wants to come through here. Sanat Kumara. My goodness, they've been working so hard to get connections back together again, um, to get the, the two to turn around and face each other again, to have the conversation, um, to embrace, even to maybe even be in the same physical country, because again, state of the world, lots of people are apart from each other in different places around the world. I know that because a lot of you have told me. Um, because what I'm seeing is, it sounds a bit weird, but I'm seeing like, a, again, the snow scene, but it's as though spirit, Sanat Kamara energy, has been, he's got like this great big shovel and it's like he's clearing a path in the snow. And if, any, if ever you, you've had really heavy snow, you know what hard work that is to actually carve a path out in the heavy snow for the one who has walked away to be able to come back. But, but again, it's a path two paths converging back to this um, moment of um, reconnection. Reconnection. Yeah, exactly. Two of crystals, balance and adaptability. It's quite interesting because we talk about balance and harmony and I've been given this, I've been giving these pieces of symbolism linked into the cold, you know, sort of like Arctic conditions I'm being drawn to, you know, places where they have a lot of snow. But equally, you know, I'm now being shown the kangaroo. So it's as though this is also, I'm being shown Australia, you know, hot, hot places. Uh, I'm being shown now. Um, it's as though spirit have made a pathway for the two to reconnect. But it's like they've put shade, they've put awning over the path so that you don't arrive with heat exhaustion back together. There's just so much work that's been going on behind the scenes um, to to create these new um, states of being. And it's also come about through portals, doorways into the now, many portals. When is our next portal? I guess we're really looking at 1010, aren't we? Um, shall I pull a card for 1010? And we'll still be in Libran season then, won't we, of course? We'll be bang in the middle of Libran season, actually. So let's ha have a look at the energy of 1010. Uh, I also want to just pull a couple of cards for the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. Let's I want to put 1010 down first. Let's just see. What does 1010 energy look like? The 1010 portal for love. The 1010 portal for love. Look at that. Arise. Arise. Uh, know and flow as the love you are bliss and it's got the two dolphins coming back to each other look at that two dolphins one has been going in that direction the other's been going in that direction they're coming back together arise 
1010. That look, if you know Sanat Kamara, it's often depicted a little bit looking a little bit like that. That feels very Sanat Kamara-ish to me. Um, okay. Bottom of the deck, we've got the dolphins as well. I mean, this is a Lemurian deck, so of course it's going to have watery images, but again, we've got now the energy of co-creation. Um, you see, the, the other thing is that you're being brought back together or deepening, uh, a deepening connection is being brought back because you're meant to do something together. It's not just about love connection. It's actually probably also about work that you have to do together or just the energetic imprint that you're meant to um, make on this planet. You have sacred gifts, and these sacred gifts need to be doubled up, basically. We've got the key. Let's just pull a card now for uh, the Divine Masculine and one for the Divine Feminine. And um, just wondering, I might get another deck actually at this point, just to shake it up a little bit. Um, Let's go with a very Merlin deck here, um, because it's a nod to Avalon. And this is Art Through the Eyes of the Soul Oracle by Cheryl Yambrook Rose. And I'd like to just see where the Divine Masculine is at this time, please, as I'm reading this today. I've suddenly gone very hot. Gone very hot. Let's just spray a bit of Merlin again. He's, he is feeling the heat, is what I'm hearing. He's feeling the heat. The masculine energy is feeling the heat. And he's got hot coals underneath his feet, I'm being told. Divine masculine energy, please. Find the middle ground and compromise. Yeah, because I, I felt that the masculine energy is, I mean, this is not just me saying it, you know, if you've watched any sort of twin flame energy reading, it's often portrayed that the masculine energy is the more stubborn one, um, or can, has been in the past, uh, maybe not willing to compromise. I mean, it might be something that's actually quite big that has to be compromised on, or something quite big that has to be let go of. Um, you know, he may very well have walked off for a reason, okay? Or the masculine part of you may very well have wanted to avoid something or walk away from something for a good reason. But you're, you're being asked here, or the masculine energy here is being asked to find a compromise, um, find the middle ground. Um, can't go on as you are, I'm hearing. Can't go on as you are. I think that's why I was being shown the hot coals underneath the feet. Um, and we've got the tour there. A calling. There's definitely like a calling back to these ancient sites as well. Um, ancient places. Transmutation. It says transmutation on the tour. Let me have one more card, please, for the masculine energy. Move away from a difficult situation. Yeah. So they're being asked to move. They're being asked to shift. They're being asked to compromise. It's quite interesting because I'm saying it with a bit of a smile, but the analogy I gave you earlier of seeing the snow and walking far away, away from each other, the masculine has come up against this great big white, icy, snowy mountain. And it's actually they've got no choice but to turn back. Uh, the irony of it. They've got the, <laughs> you've got to see the humour in this sometimes. It's almost as though, it's quite interesting though, I'm hearing, I, I, I will go to the ends of, earth, ends of the earth, but I will still find you. It's nice. Something here about literally reaching the end. You know, this is, this is the embers analogy. It's like embers, literally, it's like the fire is about to die. But at the 11th hour, it's like, actually, I've gone as far away from you as is possible. But I'm now being asked to turn around to move away from the difficult situation that I am in, that I might have created myself. Um, and transmutation is possible at the tour. So, you know, if I'm talking, I mean, I am talking to divine masculines here because you are divine masculine, even if you're a woman, because it's within all of us. 
we're being invited to visit the tour astrally, the tour at Glastonbury, um, this energy, and to be able to um, sit beneath it and make peace with our masculine energy um, and transmute whatever it is we need to transmute. What do we need to transmute? What do we need to transmute? We've got the Knight of Shells, which would be the Knight of Swords. In this deck, it's called Charm and Passion. But over and above that, it's a flamingo, isn't it? I mean, I like flamingos, but it reminds me a bit of an ostrich. I know it's not the same thing, but it's like... I would imagine it's very easy for that bird just to stick its head in the water and pretend it's not there. <laughs> I don't know, there's something about, what are you being asked to sacrifice? Let me just check what shells are in this deck. Shells in this deck are cups. Let's pull one more. What is the Divine Masculine being asked to... Oh, so I don't need another card. Okay, I'm getting it. Right, I'm seeing here a Divine Masculine energy who's like, they've always been able to put on the charm, you know? Get away with murder, actually, you know, symbolically, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing it's like an old archetype that the Masculine energy has had, which is a bit of a, a, bit of a charmer, a bit of a chancer, a bit of a... Um, oh, I, you know, I'll be able to, I'll be able to wheedle her around my fingers, you know, I'll be able to weave a little bit of a tail, doesn't matter that I've gone away for a bit, she'll always take me back, that type of energy, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a chancer, it's like ch a charmer, but, you know, that's actually quite a juvenile energy, certainly in terms of the union that's to come, or the deepening connection that's to come, there's no playing games, okay, in what is to come, there's no playing games, um, you're either in or you're out. And, um, you know, this is like last chance saloon type energy. So it's the charmer energy that is on the way out um, that you're being asked to transmute and let go of. It, it, it feels as though it goes quite deep that it's linked into the whole male female paradigm energy of we're going back lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. I'm seeing groups of women who are sort of like, oh, you know, will he have me type energy, you know? It's like, oh, you know, so so thankful that a man has sort of cast his gaze at me, you know, how how amazing is that? It's that sort it's that old energy that's on its way out. It's like, no, you're you're no, I think I've said enough, okay? <laughs> that's what's on its way out. Right, let's have a look at where the divine feminine is at the moment. Okay, these two came out straight away. You are cherished and protected. That feels very Mary Magdalene as well. And create and activate your DNA beneath the veil of Sophia. So Sophia is the divine feminine wisdom and energy archetype. You know, divine feminine energy. I mean, she's just like shrouded in this um, uh, beautiful purple and pink energy. Um, love, forgiveness, transmutation. Um, ready is what I'm hearing. She's ready. She's ready. The feminine aspect of yourself is more ready than you think it is. And um, look at that. She's got a beautiful Merkaba right there in her womb. Okay, the Merkaba energy, the light body. Light body is being activated. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then we've got this energy of a rise in the middle of these two. Beautiful. Okay, is there anything else to say here? Let's just see, anything else to say? Let's just spray the fire energy. Back to embers. Metatron. Embers was what started this video. Anything else to say as we close it out? Okay, I'm being shown um, like a campfire with embers and you <clears throat> basically poking it with a stick <clears throat> to see whether there's still life. And it's like all these beautiful gold and orange and red sparks just fly out of it and dance in the air. 
It's like they're dancing in the air. And uh, it's as though the sparks are making this magic in the air. And I'm seeing the sparks now start to form um, symbols and a, and a letter. And uh, I'm just wanting you to note the uh, what is appearing in the sky above the campfire as the sparkly embers come out and they make the formation of a word, a letter, a symbol. Um, and it's as though it's there and then it comes into your heart. So whatever it is, it's there and it comes into your heart. <clears throat> if you can't see an actual shape or letter or anything like that, just bring the ember back into your heart. Just bring it into your heart. And we thank Spirit for all they do. We thank the Palladian energy. We thank the angelic energy. We thank Sanat Kumara. We thank Merlin. We thank the fire dragons for keeping love alive. It's what I'm hearing. And protecting that love as well. Protecting that love. Okay, guys, that's all I've got today. I hope it resonated. Please like and share the video if it did. I will leave the songs below that I started this video with. I think there is, um, I think they will pull at your heartstrings and I think they will reveal um, more. Um, and also the energy of the ballet as well. Just at the end of the day, we're all dancing through life and it just feels as though there is a, um, a beautiful finale to come for many of us. Um, that doesn't mean the finale is gonna be short lived as well. Uh, I just want to look up one thing. Hold on. Oh, I was hearing the Nutcracker ballet in my head and I was thinking, I wonder what the story of the Nutcracker is. But actually, I mean, there may very well be a story linked into it. Of course there is. But um, I'm also seeing it's about cracking the nut. Cracking the hard nut. It says the Nutcracker Ballet is associated with Christmas as well. So um, that's interesting in itself because we're starting off this conversation in September, going into October for Libra season, but it feels as though it reaches some sort of climax around Christmas as well. Um, I mean, I didn't know the story. I've just read this. You know, I was talking about, obviously, if, you, if you're with me this far, we've been talking about embers, bringing something back to life. Okay, what happens at the end of the Nutcracker? Uh, Frederick quickly becomes jealous. A fight follows, and soon the doll lies broken on the floor. Cara's tears dry as her uncle manages to repair the doll. The party ends, and Clara leaves her Nutcracker by the tree before going to bed. It's about repair. This is repairing something. It's bringing something back to life. But it's spirit. It's your higher selves that have done it. And it's all about arising from the ashes. Watch this space, guys. Do let me know how this resonated and how it's going to be playing out. Take very good care of yourselves. Lots of love. Keep love alive. Bye-bye for now. Bye.